Okay, I was doing introduction in business class last night to the talk, and I think that will serve as as good an introduction as any uh, to why I'm speaking on this, and even why I wrote the book. Uh, many years ago, I used to work in advertising. I wrote TV commercials. And uh, as you can imagine, it was a ridiculously fun job. Um, I, I remember one time I, was, I had to do these ads for Rollades, and we just rented out Chase Stadium. And, uh, hired uh, Davy Jones, who was the coach of the Mets, and you know, I was like 22. And it was just the most unbelievable job. And I did that for some years, and it really was a lot of fun. But you start to get haunted by the fact that, you know, you spend millions of dollars sometimes in these commercials, and it's kind of like, a lot of the stuff you're saying isn't true. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. Um, but, it, you know, it, there, there's a degree of dishonesty, and I remember, um, probably when I was 25, 26, um, I was about to do a series of commercials for STP oil treatment. And uh, so I went up to Union Carbide that makes STP and then talked to the product manager because you're supposed to find this unique selling point. What does STP do? And as it turns out, nothing. It does nothing. <laughs> it, it, uh, in fact, the product manager says, yeah, no, no, it, it, it doesn't. Um, <laughs> and so I so, said, so, you know, don't racers use this in their car? said, well, they soak their engine parts in it after the race. And I said, well, you know, isn't it supposed to give people an edge? SDP is the racer's edge. So, well, you can't really say that anymore. You, you can sing it, because that's not really making a claim. It's a song. So there's a, a way in which you can make a claim by singing it, but you can't say it. So I said, let me get this right. In the commercials, all I can really say is, STP, it doesn't suck. Is that, is that right? Or it sucks less? Or 25% less suckiness? I mean, what, what do you want me to say about STP? I mean, it, does it do any? I mean, he said, and, and these are the words, it's like black magic. You think it works? It works. So I left Union Carbide, and I thought, do I want to do this for the next some odd years? And I, I resigned that, uh, it, a week later. And I went into ministry, and I been decades, I guess, since then of the ministry. And, and I think something that I noted about a decade ago, being in that world, um, was that every time I pick up a magazine, Newsweek Time, it's, what did Jesus really say? And there's all these books, and it's, it's like marketing Jesus, just trying to, and, and I felt like people really didn't know what was going on. And I got a call, my mother's like this saintly, dear Catholic woman who, who doesn't sin. And she calls, and she's, she's virtually in tears because she's read the Da Vinci Code. It's like, is it true? Did they make this all up? No, no. Just, I, so I took, like, for an hour, I'm talking her through this crisis in her faith. And, and I, I just thought, you know, this shouldn't be this difficult. People are making it really difficult. It's really not that complicated. In fact, it sells magazines if it's complicated. If there's some scholars who have found some new piece of paper buried in a safe somewhere in Israel that says Jesus was a hot dog vendor or something, <laughs> uh, it, it, there's always some new thing that's coming out. And, and really, when you, you uncover it, if you know what's going on, it's, it's marketing. It's marketing, you sell newspapers and books. And so I wrote that little book, which you might have seen when you came in, Jesus Without Religion, and that's what I want to share with you tonight. You don't have to, you can believe whatever you want, but I do think it's important, at least it's, it is important to me, that you understand exactly what Jesus said, what he was doing, and then you make your own decision. But it shouldn't be based on some sort of strange distortions. I kind of watched uh, you know, Madison Avenue marketing washing up on the shores of, of you know, religion and Christianity. You know, I, I, I feel like we can make this fairly clear. So what I want to do tonight is you will leave here, I promise you, you will leave here with at least a, a sense of, oh, I get it. I, I see what he was saying. I, I mean, I might not agree with it, but I get it, okay? So that's my goal. And so we'll go through some things, and what I want to do is usually we can talk about Jesus, and, and any of these articles and books, Jesus, we talk about him abstractly, like he was a paramecium or something. I don't know where that word came from. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't use that since seventh grade. It's good to know it's still in my head, rolling around with William Shatner. Okay. <laughs> 
So what I want to do is I just want to look at a passage. I want to look at a specific story from one of the Gospels, and that's what we're going to do. And we're going to ask this particular text or passage a few questions, and I think in doing so you will have a better handle on who Jesus was, what he claimed, uh, all of those things I think we'll answer. So let's take a look at the passage here, okay? It, it should be maybe a familiar story, but if not, I'll orate it from here. Um, okay. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. And it's Jesus we're talking about. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him up and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Okay, we want to ask this passage, so to speak, four questions. We want to ask this. Why, first of all, does Jesus calm the storm? Why? Why? Second, why don't the disciples seem to recognize who Jesus is? Third, why is Jesus sleepy? Why is he sleeping? Fourth, why is faith the issue? Why is faith? Why does he talk to them afterwards and say, you have little faith? What is it about faith? And even as you talk to other people or hear people talk about uh, their uh, walk with God, you'll hear faith over and over again. What is it about faith? We answer those things, and I think we'll be good to go. So here's the first one. Why does Jesus calm the storm? Why does Jesus calm the storm? If, go back to the other slide. Don't look at that. <laughs> Stop. All right, stay there. Perfect. Okay. Last night, I don't have cable at home, and I was watching uh, at the Comfort Inn that has the glorious 100-foot indoor slide. I was watching on my TV, uh, you know, all they were running all the Matrix movies, uh, which is kind of like cops. It's always on. It's, it's some station is always playing. It, or, or it's never not on. And so I couldn't sleep, so I was just watching uh, all of these Matrix movies, and if you notice, if you ever, I'm sure you've all watched it, the, the uh, was it Wachowski Brothers, uh, whatever, um, they do uh, what you call cinematography, or cinematographic, uh, I think, footnotes. You know, if you read a book that has footnotes, you'll see, for instance, within there, if you've ever watched the movie Fight Club, you will see a footnote to Fight Club. It means, as an, it has had an inspiration, there's an allusion to it, you only know someone, you know, by fighting them. There's allusions to other movies, there's allusions to the Terminator, there's allusions to Bruce Lee's Game of Death, uh, on and on. There's a dozen allusions to the movie, they're like footnotes, 